Hello and welcome to this AE Basics tutorial where we're going to carry on looking at the animators that we can apply to text in the timeline. So at the moment I've got two layers of text here. I'm going to choose my selection tool V as the keyboard shortcut so that we can look at some of the other options that we've got. So I'm going to click the animate button to create a range selector. I'm going to choose tracking. And you'll notice that we've got animator 1, we've got our range as we're normally used to. So if I just open up my range selector, click start, there's my range. So everything inside there is going to be affected and I can start playing with tracking amount. As I start to drag out tracking amount, you'll see that it's tracking from the center. Now there are other ways of changing that, but actually one of the simplest ways of making tracking happen either from the center or from one end is to actually go to your paragraph panel and click either left align, right align or center align. Because I'm at the center, everything's going to track from the center but if I go to right you'll see that everything will track from the right if I go to left you'll see that everything will track from the left so that's just how you can quickly play with the different ways of tracking text by using the paragraph panel to show where the text is going to change from so if I go to the add button now make sure that my animator is selected and goes to the add button property under tracking, I've got something that says line anchor. Now, what's line anchor going to do for me? If I play with my tracking amount, you'll see that at the moment it's going from the middle. And as I said, there are different ways of doing this. It's simply, you can play with a line anchor. So if you don't want it to be absolutely at the beginning, absolutely at the end, or absolutely in the middle, say we want it at 25 or 75, stick that at 75, you'll see that the tracking is going to take place from 75% perspective so it's not absolutely in the middle so if you want to play with where it's going to take place as opposed to having it at the beginning at the end or at the middle you can simply play with the line anchor if I take it to 25 percent 24 percent you'll see that it's going to animate from the anchor which is going to be at about 24 percent of the length of the line so that's simply how we can play with the line anchor if I now go to the add button property and I go to line spacing, it's as simple as animating the line spacing. So we can have the lines further up, closer together, or moved from one side to another. And of course, as you pull your range through, everything's going to pop back into place simply by playing with this. Okay, so the line spacing is simply playing with the line spacing. Of course, if I want to, I can pull it right down. And again, the same thing's true. I can have the text pulling in coming in from different angles by playing with the line spacing. If I want to, I can actually physically pull that off screen to get that sort of look of text coming in. Okay, so that's how you can play with these different bits and pieces by using that particular set of um, tracking options. I'm going to delete the animator just to show you the next section, so delete that. Brings me back to the animate button, so just click animate, and then we're going to look at these ones here. Character offset. If I click character offset, once again, I've got my range selector, and we can look at offsetting characters. What does that mean? Basically, it's sort of uh, almost like a matrixy type look. As you start to pull character offset through, the characters are going to zip through all kinds of different options. And you'll see here that the second one down says character range. You can preserve the case and digits, or you can go for full Unicode. If you go for full Unicode, you can get some real kind of weird looks moving through with all kinds of bits and pieces as you go backwards and forwards through them. And of course, as you play with your range selector and you open up your range selector, text can then pop in from the back or from the front, depending on how you make it or how you want it to work. Alternatively, of course, you can just select a little bit and you could scrub that with the offset all the way through the text, just to give almost a glitchy type look to the text that people are watching. Okay, so I'm just going to reset these, offset and take the start back to zero. So it's been affected. And you've got some alignment options here, which you can just play with in your own time. Okay, so what else have we got? I'm just going to delete this particular one. So delete the animator and go back to my animate button and choose character value. And this is kind of similar. 
As you start to pull through the character value, you'll see that all the characters move together in a uniform way. And you, again, you can preserve case and digits, or again, you can go for full Unicode. And as you go to full Unicode, it's not a massive difference between the two, but you can play with these. You get all kinds of different options as you want to play with as you pull through. Okay, so, and again, for reveal, you open up your range selector, you can pull it through to reveal the text, and of course, you still have the option with the offset to be able to scrub it through to give that kind of glitchy look if that helps with your animation. Okay, so again, I'm going to reset those and reset the start. And the other animator that we've got, again, I'm going to delete this animator and we'll just go for the not quite the final one, is Blur. If you go to Blur, you can animate Blur. So we can have the text thoroughly blurred and we can reveal it in this way. Now, you might not like the way that that pops on and off. Again, as I say, in the advanced section, we can actually have a look at a few of those options and see if we can make them pop on in different ways. So it's just a different way of changing blur. And again, you can get some really nice effects if you want to draw people's attention. And often with text, it is all about grabbing someone's eye. It's not about fantastic animations. It's about making people pay attention to what you're doing. So when you use some of these effects and you're just pulling them through, what you're saying is, Hoy, look, Pay attention to my text, see something's going on, and when you've got something that pulls through a text, even if it's even smaller than that, just a tiny little bit, just pulling through the text a little bit at a time, you're saying to people something's happening and the eye is always drawn to movement. So if you've got some text and something is happening, you can do it through here. And notice again, I've got a space here. Do you remember I showed you a few tutorials ago? You can open up the advanced section and you can choose this one based on and go for excluding spaces. And then you'll see that as you pull through, you aren't stuck with spaces. It's always going to go straight on to the next thing, which can give you a slightly smoother animation if that's what you want to work with. Right, well, in the last tutorial, I'm going to start looking at enabling per character 3D. And then we might start to look at a few more of these advanced options. My name's Andrew Davis. I hope you're finding these tutorials useful. And thank you for watching.